tremendous defensively. Um, play at the end of the game, wow, what a pass. Uh, could have gone either way. Obviously, we're, we're really fortunate. Excited. Got to move on quickly because here comes another one at noon in a couple days. Questions? My on the pizza. <laughs> yeah. What did you see on y'all's last possession? I mean, and, and, the, and the job that Russ did getting that rebound. Yeah, that. huge. Um, we want to play down here. We had one, and, and Justin Hill has made plays for us, obviously, and, and the ball's going to be in his hands, and, and more to come moving forward. Um, we've got other guys, too, that, that we trust down the stretch, but um, just trying to get downhill and, and thought if we were neutralized, you know, we could use one of them. Um, we ended up getting a couple looks there, and, and, and Russ made a, an enormous play, obviously, and then converted the foul line as well. Huge play by Russ. Russell, uh Obviously, he comes through there in the clutch, but uh, did Reed struggle? To, uh, and Noah struggled for a good long while. You yeah. um, talked about Justin. I, I guess the key to being a good team slash great team is winning when maybe it's an off night a little bit. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna be in a conversation, you know, to play some postseason, there's gonna be a handful of those. You know, for a team like us, that um, if you're fortunate enough to get over the hump and, and win some or all of those, you give yourself a better chance, obviously. Um, and we'll have more of those. And you know, I'm sure LSU will as well. Um, but I, you know, it wasn't our best offense performance again, but I, I think LSU is one of the best defenses in our league. We're coming off a game where, especially in the second half, Kentucky playing with a big lead, we scored it probably easier than we normally will moving forward. So um, shouldn't be overly surprised. And I think, again, LSU had a lot to do with um, Proximity to Jabri, you know, throughout the, the 40, um, the attention to detail, um, the defensive execution, just overall, um, they they were terrific. Nothing came easy for us. What goes into the decision to not call a timeout after the free made free throw? First off, who your guards are and, and, and what your strengths are um, offensively. Um, we've been a team that is is pretty good. You know, if, if you look at our ability to. to to touch paint, you know, off penetration and draw fouls. Um, our numbers have been pretty good all year, and um, we had a couple guards in there that um, um, that we trusted, you know, to make plays. Obviously, um, probably LSU's prowess too, and their um, ability to take us out of some actions as well throughout the game. You know, the fact that um, we uh, we called different guys' numbers a few times and. They just did a good job of, of blowing up some of our actions. So just an opportunity to at least try it, you know, and um, enough time to, to use one if you needed to use one. What's it sort of like in those last seconds where they get a shot? And they just what's sort of go into your head as that shot goes up and it's late in the season? Kind of, kind of like um, my goodness, scary. And I, you know, I was, I was down there in the corner, and it was one of the best passes I've ever seen. And the footwork here in the corner to tie rope the the sideline and the, and the three-point line and get a clean look off. Um, eager to see it uh, on film, but um, it was, uh, yeah, nerve-wracking to say the least. There was we're a, really fortunate. I mean, great execution by those guys. There was a long stretch in the second half where Salah seemed to be sitting for a long time. Were you trying to make sure he had a lot of juice at the end because it seemed like he was playing really well? Yeah, he was. He, there's a lot of different reasons. Um, to sub guys in, to sub guys out. Sometimes it has to do with them. Sometimes it has to do with the other guy that you want to get in or out for them. Um, the flow, how you're being defended, um, how, how you're guarding. You know, just there, there's so many factors. Um, but with that one, uh, as much as anything, it was hey, we want to make sure we we can ride him down the stretch. You know, we want to make sure that he can help us finish and um, <clears throat> get him some rest and, and uh, allow him to hydrate a little bit. He's he was a true freshman who's playing a lot of minutes for us. RJ Melendez had another big game off the bench, and especially mm -hmm. that dunk and transition out uh, of the really crowd, crowd going. How does, what does he do that always finds himself having such a presence in transition? Really competitive uh, in transition. Yeah. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's got good length. He's got ability to run through passes. He's really, really fast. And so, um, you know, his first, his first few steps there, whether he gets the ball or he receives a pitch ahead. Um, 
especially off the turnovers, long rebounds. He's just out. You know, he's a he's a fast player. He's got a nose for the rim in transition. Um, had a drive in, in the half court as well. Um, you know, where he drew fouls, converted at a high level at the foul line too. But he's a guy like Justin Hill um, that is um, going to play starter minutes and produces like a starter. He's a good player. How do you, Mike? How do you play call or? When, when two of your offensive stars are, are, are struggling from yeah. the floor shooting, I know there's a lot of elements, but yeah. how do you get a feel for that? How does the team adjust? I mean, that, that seems like a veteran thing when you're able to have uh, tough shooting nights from Jabri and yeah, just overcome Yeah, obviously that. not very well. You know, I, I probably should have tried some different things. Um, I just, we, we grinded one out and nothing was real pretty offensive. But again, I think that has more to do with LSU's defense than anything else. Um, but yeah, there, there were, some possessions there where you're searching a little bit, of course. Um, thank goodness we were able to convert at the foul line. Um, Russ's four offense rebounds got us extra possessions, of course. Um, yeah, we, we've got we to execute better against the best defense. Well, I guess where I was going with that was the, the freshman's ability to pick up some slack. Um, they mentioned Melendez. It got different guys stepping up yeah. in different ways, it seemed like. Yeah, I thought I thought Blue Kane hit a couple baskets there where we needed one. You know, played with some confidence, played um, under control in the paint, um, and created those for himself. Um, continuing to develop, he's having good practices. Um, but our bench, again, if, if you look at, at our bench, um, the four guys that played produced in, in a lot of different ways. Obviously, guards get a lot of the love for the amount that the ball is in their hands. But to see a big man have a play like that, just how, is, how exciting is that to know, you know, what he goes through on a game by game basis? Huge. Um, it's nice to see the big fellow with the game winner. Uh, those other guys have had their opportunities, and, um, especially coming off the game. I want to say he held nine seals for for layups at Kentucky, and try to do it throughout the game today as well. And he's uh, he's really buying into helping his teammates be better, and um, so it's nice to see him benefit. When you say you guys grinded it out, yeah. do your best Florida teams do that too? Like when you, when you need these kind of games? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, again, in order to be in the conversation, we got to win a lot more. But um, it's certainly better than, you know, than the alternative. You know, and it's, it's not going to be easy in this league. And, and it's the best defensive league in college basketball. And it seems like every time you, you play a team, you say, well, well, they're one of the best defenses in our league too. You know? Who's not? Who doesn't guard you at a really high level? And uh, they're 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 rebuilding, and we're rebuilding, and uh, you had two teams just fight it out. And we can say ugly and grind it and all that stuff, but really, uh, I probably should say more, um, make the point more that if you, you had ten guys out there on the court, you know, for forty minutes that were just throwing haymakers. You know, it was a high level game of intensity. Um, I know everybody that played that game is going to be tired, sleep well, and need some rest because we both got quick turnarounds. But it was a competitive, high level game. It felt like the crowd was pretty energized, and there's a home awesome. court and a home court developing. Do you notice awesome. much of an impact? There? Absolutely, absolutely. We were better defensively in the second half, and I thought that had a lot to do with with our fans. Uh, it got loud in there, and uh, I'm really appreciative. As a coach, trying to, you know, like you said, you're rebuilding and kind of building the culture of this program. How much yeah. does that mean to you specifically to see Huge. students and fans get involved? I'm super appreciative. I'm, I'm more excited, though, for um, for our guys. But I'm also excited for anyone who was in that building. It was a fun game. It was because it was so loud. It was high-level college basketball. And, and the fans that show up and, and scream and jump on the refs, and, you know, we just appreciate it. But, um, and also, you know, excited for them to experience – it wasn't like that last year. It wasn't that loud last year. Right. Um, I don't know if that was quite as loud as the Tennessee game, but it got loud in there a few times for sure. And look forward to a few more of those. Can you, what 